Okay. Okay. Hello, everyone. It is four thirty-two on um, Tuesday, April twenty-third. Uh, no, it is the twenty-second. It is Perfect. Yeah. Uh, thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, Two into chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. Um, no in-person attendance members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. So welcome everyone. Let me just do the roll call. Um, Ms. Haygood, I know she's here. She's just getting on another computer. So Joy Eiffel is not here. Ms. Wana Khan? Here. Deborah Kolodny? Here. Tyler? Here. Ronnie, I'm here. Jacinta Smith? Here. Okay, uh, so we have a quorum, which is great. I'm here, by the way. Yes, I called you. Thank you. Um, and we do have a quorum, so um, I think, um, and you all have the agenda. Let's go to, um, let's do public comment right away. Um, during the public comment period, the chair will recognize members of the public. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name, preferred pronouns, and residential address. Residents are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes at the discretion of the chair based on the number of people who wish to speak. No speaker can cede their time to another speaker. The HRC will not engage in a dialogue or comment on a matter raised during public comment. Do we have anyone in the public? I don't think so. No, you do. There are two people in um, the public. I'm just not sure if they would like to speak at this time. Okay, now is the time I see a raised hand. Lev mm -hmm. Venezuela, please speak. Hey, can you hear me all right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, thank you so much. Uh, I am Lev Benezra. I'm speaking in my capacity as the executive director of the Amherst Survival Center. I'm located on Sunderland Road. And I have a question and some comments regarding the proposed bylaws but I would prefer to hear the committee's discussion first, but I wanted to know if there will be an, another opportunity for public comment after that discussion prior to a vote, or if I should share my viewpoints now. I'm going to defer to Pamela because you have the answer to that question. I think um, there is an yes. opportunity after the meeting is over, but not necessarily after each bullet point or each um, discussion that we have. So it is up to you whether you would like to wait until the end of our meeting, but not necessarily the end of this discussion on bylaws. Great, okay. Um, Thank you so much well, for that clarification. I'm happy to just go ahead and chime in. Um, first of all, really appreciate the work of the volunteers on this committee and thank you for the opportunity to be present. Um, in reviewing the draft bylaws, um, there are a couple of questions that just come up for me regarding this. Um, and the first is that in point three, there is not any information as to what an investigation includes. So I would urge the commission to please specify what that investigative process is and specifically what are the responsibilities and opportunities afforded to both the complainant and the respondent uh, in order to address the concerns that are raised. Um, and specifically, I would urge the commission to include in that that there is a guarantee that the respondent 
be provided with information about the allegations against them so that they are able to re and given the opportunity to respond. Um, another question that comes up for me, it appears from these draft bylaws that there is a requirement from the commission for the complainant to provide their name and address. Um, so I am interpreting that as indicative that anonymous complaints would not be provided or would not be permitted. However, if that's not the case, I would urge the commission to really think thoughtfully about how anonymous complaints would be handled um, and in what way a respondent could reasonably provide information um, based on those details. Uh, the next point that I would like to raise is that I would really urge the commission to include in this investigate, investigative process um, a clause regarding a release of information. I believe that there are many entities for which someone could theoretically have a complaint against, which either legally or based on their own policies would not be able to so much as confirm or deny whether that person was in fact a client or a patient, et cetera, um, in order to respond to that information and would like to make sure that included in that process that, of course, it's an individual's right to not sign a release of information, but would like to then see recognition by the commission of the way that that would limit the scope such that a respondent is not penalized for respecting the confidentiality of an individual um, and their, their wishes. Um, and then the last question that I have is in regards to the confidentiality of parties. I um, would love to see the commission spell out under what circumstances other town employees would be brought into a concern versus when it would be held um, confidential. Um, so those are just a couple of the comments. Again, I recognize this hasn't yet been discussed by the commission, um, but based on the timing, so there may be a number of these that are already answered that you all have already thought out beautifully, um, and I don't presume otherwise, um, but I just wanted to share those. I really salute the commission for having written procedures. I think this is really important, um, and I appreciate the opportunity to comment on what I think would make for a stronger investigative process that helps provide uh, credibility out of that and help address concerns that are raised by area residents. So thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any other comments? So I don't see any other hands raised. I think we are ready to move on with then with our agenda. Um, so today's items include the HRC bylaw, the counselor liaison, DIE Crest reports, chief of police and Crest director search, and then statements and proposals that uh, Rizwana and Deb have brought forward. So shall we start with the bylaw? Um, maybe what a good way to start would be to go around and see if everyone has looked at the new bylaw and is ready to discuss it. Um, and if you are, then we'll see if we're ready to vote. And if we're not, let's go through the issues that we have with the bylaw. So, uh, I'm just going to call in the order of the list of members that I have here. Um, Liz? I just have, have a question. Are you ready um, to discuss it? Oh, I've looked at it. I just can't figure out where I saw it at and where to get back at it. I'm trying to pull it back up on my computer and I can't seem to find it. I found Thank it you. in the materials for the February 27th meeting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But I have looked at it. So, yes, I'm ready to discuss. Did you, did you so, have your hand? As part of the way to discuss, someone could make the motion to approve it and then you can open it up for discussion. I move to approve. No so second. we would need, you need a second. Need a second. Second. Yeah. second. Second. Okay. Now you can open up for discussion. Um I thought the comments that were just made seemed really sound, but we should probably take them one at a time. And I don't know if anybody 
recorded them. Um, I mean, I re I recorded the first three, and then I got lost and <laughs> got kind of lost. So um, I have. Oh, go ahead, Rithwana. Yeah, I think we'll need more time to look into that because they, as Deb said, there were quite a lot of them, you know, and we we'll need to ponder it because otherwise the bylaws that we had already discussed recently with Deb and Rani, they, they, I read them and they seemed very clear and we had discussed that also, but at point right now at this moment of time, because new uh, points have come up, so as Deb said, we should, uh, you know, have time to look at that because off cuff, I cannot also think like that. Thank you. Um, I had different comments on it. Um, I had a couple of points just going back to the old um, uh, bylaw because I think the new bylaws incorporated our comments, but they also changed other parts of the uh, original bylaws that we had not asked to be changed. Um, and so, um, for instance, the whole purpose statement, the whole mission statement that used to be there that said um, that the mission is to ensure that no power goes unchecked and that all residents are afforded equal protection under the law uh, is gone. Uh, it's replaced with, uh, I don't know, it's replaced with something more mundane like we report to the town manager uh, uh, et cetera. Uh, it does say, the new version does give a more detailed definition. It does say these rights are inherent to us all. Uh, it does say, uh, regardless of nationality, sex, gender, blah, 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 blah. It's very, quite detailed, it range from the most fundamental, the right to life, to those that make life worth living. All of that is actually very good. But it left out sort of, uh, the vision of our role, which we have joked about in our discussions, as though we're really able to ensure that no power goes unchecked. On the other hand, uh, when I saw it taken off the new version, um, it made me think that there was something about the vision that got lost. So I wanted to discuss that with members of the commission and see how people feel about it. And if you don't, you know, if it's not a big deal, then we can go with the version that exists now. Um, that was my big thing. Then there were other smaller bits that maybe will come up if we do uh, discuss the questions that Lev has raised that were procedural. Uh, the annual human rights report has always gone to the town council. Now it says it goes to the town manager and I think we've asked that it go to the town council and that our advisory role is with the town council. Not that they've taken or asked our advice ever that I can think of, but it's sort of important to have it there, I think, in the bylaws, if we should ever have a town council that wants to consult us on something, some matter related to human rights. Those are my so comments. Who would I, I am to? under the impression, as far as the first point is who we report to, um, it says that we established an advisory committee to the town manager and town council. I do also know, and I'm not sure where it is that it says that our annual report, I got to scroll down, goes to the town manager because it does go to the town council and we have to, I don't want to say the word defend it because I don't think we should have, we're not defending our report where, because um, I remember last year, Ronnie, I was in person and you was, on Zoom where we actually discussed with um, the town council, the report and they had to accept it or not. So it did go to the town council, not the town manager. And I, just, again, gotta scroll down and find out where that is in the- I know, I can see exactly where it is and I agree which with page you. Is it, on? it should be the way it was. There are no page numbers here, but if you go to oh. duties and you go to point three, it Duty, says, serve the resource, serve as a resource to the town manager, town sorry, council, point four, and rights point director. Four. No, this is what, a written report. Oh, to then the town manager on the commission's activities. Yeah. I, would I just think, change it to the town council. 
So there are small changes like that that I would uh, propose um, to make, to make simply to align our work a little bit more with the town council and the town manager. I don't have an issue. So why can't the we just leave manager town? there? But why? We're more, we can well, leave it in. If at the beginning we're reporting to the town council and the town manager, then that report should say that the annual provide annually provide a written report to the town council and the town manager. So instead of just taking out town manager, add town council. Because it says that in the top where we're reporting to both. So either take That's out fine. town manager up top or add town manager in point four of duties. I would, I'm would. i fine having them both. I would like the town council to be the first thing mentioned and the town manager to be the second thing. So if you All look right. at point three, for instance, it says resource to the town manager, town council, and human rights director. So I would have it be town council, town manager, and human rights director. That's all. There, it's there. As I said, some of these are small things, they're impressionistic, but I feel for a formal document like this, they're important. The only substantive issue I have with any of this is just that that first one, it was sort of the vision thing, you know, like what are people thinking we're about in the big picture? And I like being, I like having it be an aspir open with an aspirational statement. Okay, I'm done, Deb. Yeah, so, so far I'm with you on both of your suggestions. I'm wondering if we might be able to have you, I don't know what the process is. Can you make a proposal and then we take a vote on each one of them? Um, Cause I'm ready to move, not just like talk. So once and the discussion is other... over, once the discussion okay. is over Deb, we will yeah. say we approve it with necessary changes or not approve it and go back to the drawing board to fix whatever it is we deem that we can't fix by a vote. So that's what the process is. We do it you know? all, all, of the, uh, all of the edits at the same time, not one at a time? No, we would do all the edits. And when we vote, we would say, we approve the Human Rights Commission bylaws with the necessary adjustments or necessary edits or whatever the word is, I don't remember. Yeah, and then we would vote on that. And if there's too many, we can always put the vote aside or negate the vote or vote no based on more work or whatever it is that we need to do. All right, I just want to Let's say- Let's continue that, then with comments. I just want to say that when I was considering joining the uh, commission, the language that um, we would be part of a system that makes sure no power goes unchecked was um, very exciting to me. Okay, others? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I agree with uh, both of you actually, Rani and um, Deb, because uh, the vision uh, statement is very important because it encapsulates everything and gives you that high also that there's some uh, mission you are working at. And, and it was very clear. So we should reinstate that. It's as simple as that. And because you have gone over everything, the bylaws, and if you think that uh, we uh, have uh, done the editing and updated the bylaws, so I think we should vote for it. It's up to you. Yeah, I, I'll agree, yeah. So the other thing we need to consider as well as we're um, fleshing this out is that this um, bylaw change will go to the town manager and our lawyers and the town council and they mm -hmm. have to approve it and some of the changes that are in there were suggested by the three or four meetings that ronnie and i had with the town manager and the lawyers so just keep that in the back of your mind as we're discussing please i will speak up if i hear anything being proposed that i think they will veto and i guess uh and Liz also can do that based on the conversations we've had. But I want to hear from Tyler and Jacinta as well about what you think. Yeah, um, I think that the language of no power going unchecked uh, might be 
somewhat outside the scope of this commission um, in the sense that this is not like we don't have subpoena power. Um, we can't um, check the vast and overwhelming majority of powers within the town of Amherst. However, as an aspirational goal, um, I agree with Deborah. I think that it is an aspirational goal that's worth keeping. And at the very least, I think the commission is a still a force for change, um, even among those institutions that the commission might not really be able to um might not really be able to have that much influence over. But all the same, I I did like the language and I don't really see why that language necessarily would need to go just because it's a bit aspirational. Yeah. Um in terms of like the comment that the the public comment that we received, I do agree about the like cons what consists of an edge of an investigation. I'm not sure if there's like something that we can cite to say, okay, an investigation includes like that it's similar to this thing that it already exists in terms of I think that that would be helpful. Um especially since complaints seem can be really dramatic, not really dramatic, but um really emotional in the moment that it would help people who are like, okay, who can I reach out to? Let me reach out to the Humans, Human Rights Commission. Okay, I wanna give a complaint, but there's an investigation that happens as a result of that. And I don't know what that looks like. I don't know if I can trust that person or um, like with before even coming to, or to, to the Human Rights Commission. So I guess like considering that more, maybe having more of a in-depth conversation um, or um, I know we can like, possibly change this in the future. Um, and so co coming back and thinking, okay, this is an example of an investigation that uh, we will put forth in the case that somebody comes forward with a, a pretty serious complaint or even a not so serious one. Ms. Wana. Yeah, I, and after Jacinta, I, I... I'm thinking about that. And the fact is that it becomes a very tedious and a very long uh, term process of finding steps to uh, investigate. And it really, it's a very technical thing. And uh, I don't know whether we are in that position to be able to do that. So we, because then it will be a very long drawn extenuating circumstances where we keep on updating the bylaws. So we, we need to have some kind of a guidelines as to how much we can do and how much we can reach because we still are just a little committee of residents and we are all volunteers. Um, yeah, so Ms. Wana, you may not be aware that we personally don't do the investigations. It's no. partly for con confidentiality. They're carried out by the Director of Human Rights who is the, also the Director of DEI mm -hmm. and her office. So we don't usually even know if there's a complaint until the end of the year report. Um, okay. And some, like the co-chairs will sometimes be notified if there's mm -hmm. a need for whatever reason, but we don't have any details. I mean, it's something there, the way it's set up right now, it is really oriented toward protecting people's confidentialities and the recognition that members of the commission don't always have the experience or expertise True. to be able to handle these things in a way that's legal and ethical and True. sort of correct, I think. So I don't think we, when we talk about responding to a complaint, it really is the director of human rights who does that. Um, I would like to just to close the door on the aspirational statement. I have a very concrete suggestion. And if people are okay with that, then when we vote, it'll be clear about how to handle that, because it's very specific. Um, so the way the first paragraph now reads is, there shall be established an advisory committee to the town manager and town council. I would change it to the town council and the town manager to be known as the Human Rights Commission. 
And then it says the purpose of the commission, and it's a great statement. But before you go into the purpose of the commission, which is very concrete, I think that's the time to say the mission of the commission is to ensure that no power goes unchecked and that all residents are afforded equal protection under the law. Then you can say the purpose um, is to protect human rights of town of Amherst residents as defined below, including freedom from discrimination, disrespect, bigotry, other forms of microaggressions, macroaggressions, hatred and oppression, and to reaffirm the town's commitment to upholding and defending the rights of all individuals to enjoy the free and equal exercise of their rights and privileges, et cetera. And then it details even more, and it's quite strong, I think, what the lawyers wrote. So I would just suggest uh, before going into the purpose, inserting a statement that just says the mission, and it just takes the sentence from what was there before. So if there's no objection, we can continue discussing down the line um, if we want to use Liz's approach and vote at the end. And then with regard to the procedures that Rizwana raised, um, I really need guidance on this. Pamela, would you like to comment on that? I feel like a lot of that is there already, but. Um, I, I actually have a, a couple of comments. Uh, one, and I don't have the charter in front of me, but I'm working with another board that is um, revising their charge. And I do believe that the charter for the town requires that the report um, go through the town manager to town council um, because the board does report to the town manager, not uh, directly to the town council. And that change, I think, was a part of the charter process. I'd have to reach out to Athena to get more information about that. But I know in the discussions that we're having with the other board, it's very specific that it's the town manager who actually has the authority over the boards. So just as a heads up, I do think that your compromise of including both parties will be acceptable, but it, it might read town manager, town council, instead of town council, town manager. Um, as far as the procedures, um, I think it's important to have of specific procedures. I think that the attorneys have tried to craft uh, an outline of a process that would be uh, manageable by town employees. Um, it, you know, most individuals who would probably fill this role or may or may not have a legal background. And so they've tried to, to create a process that could be handled by anyone in the future, right? And not necessarily someone who has um, a JD degree. I think the, um, the, the practice has been in town that the office would con connect with both parties, hear from both parties, and then have an opportunity to, um, you know, to, to, re to you know, come to some sort of resolution based on feedback from both both from both parties. And that that practice has been followed. Um, it, it's probably I, I'd have I don't have the revised bylaw in front of me. I think that um, perhaps there's an opportunity to be more clear about that, that there's an opportunity to hear from both um, from both the respondent and the complainant. Um, um, at, and I think the process has been generally that the um, uh, respondent and the complainant have, have um, you know, as I've said, have, have had an opportunity to present both sides of their argument. And then there has been some uh, suggested resolution. But because the HRC has very limited powers with a resolution, I mean, it's the the outcome, the strongest outcome that the board could could really provide, or and the only outcome at this point is to have a conciliatory conference. I don't know if there is a need to have very specific outline uh, details about what that process is, because 
um, unlike an administrative law hearing where both parties are submitting documents. In some cases in the past, people have submitted documents. In some cases, they have not. In some cases in the past, the, um, the office has gathered information and has reached out to, um, to other departments. And in some cases, they have not. So an, ex an example would be last year, the, uh, the HRC received a complaint that involved an issue where we felt like it was important to have expertise from outside of the community respond. So we actually contacted a state agency that came and investigated, or actually shouldn't say investigated, they came and provided um, expertise advice on the situation that was then incorporated into the decision the, of the, um, you know, of the HRC. Um, so I don't know, I, I, am, I can see where it would be very helpful for a complainant or a respondent to have very specific information, but I think the capacity to have a very detailed outline process um, is one that the town is likely not to have. Liz, you have a question for me? I don't have a question. I was gonna respond okay. a little more to after you were done okay. speaking. Yeah, all right. And does anybody else have a question? Yeah, I have. <clears throat> okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I I was just um, <clears throat> trying to um, you know figure out that we as a committee are basically uh, you you would um, say that we are pressure group basically who are highlighting the uh, human rights um, you know over here in this in the town basically uh, that's what we are because as such we do not have the powers or any other thing so we are more like awareness group group. So I think the, the way that the bylaw is written is very, very broad. So you, the as um, an HRC, as a board or as the HRC director, anyone who feels that they have been discriminated against really in any capacity um, would have the right to bring a complaint to the attention of the HRC through the HRC director. Very, very broad pro pro purview, um, but the authority to actually impact a resolution is very limited. So what the revised bylaws actually do um, for the, you know, is one, they um, place in a suggestion for uh, what I would call a statute of limitations, right, that people need to bring things to the attention of the board in a timely manner so that they're not bringing things um, that occurred years ago, right? And there's, um, it also states that um, it sets a time frame for when decisions have to be made so that they're made in a timely manner, they don't drag on, and people can afford themselves to other uh, state agencies that have actual authority to, um, uh, you know, to to come to a resolution. So it's I think yeah. what the attorneys did is try to you know walk a fine line between keeping the purview of the of the HRC very broad, pretty much anything, right? But realize that as a uh, as a town, the mm -hmm. powers to affect a resolution are very limited. Yeah, thank you. Sure. Is Ronnie, is that a question for me or do you? Yeah, yeah. I think that uh, tells me a lot. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Right. Good enough. Sorry, I'll go after Liz. I know Liz okay. is wait. All right. I will mute myself. So one of the things that we need to be aware of is that this draft came from um, hours of conversation between Ronnie and me and our town manager, but specifically our um, legal team from the town. And that's where this draft came from, taken into some of the concerns that we had as a commission, as well as the 
legalities, if you will, of our position uh, within uh, within our charter. Um, and we wanted to distinguish between um, us being a sounding board for somebody and being a resolution board for somebody. We are not, we cannot be a resolution board. The other thing that was most important to all of us is that the confidentiality piece for fear of retribution or somebody's private business getting out needs to be limited. Um, as we talk about um, complaints, we also talked about the fact that each month when we meet that Pamela would give an overview about anything that came in. So we're not waiting till the end of the year to find out we had a complaint in September. If there was a complaint in September and happened after the third Wednesday, we would know at our meeting in October. Um, there was one more point that I was going to make and I just lost my brain. Um, Brad it all. Oh, and this is the other point. I'm looking at everybody's face on the screen except for Rizwana because she's blogged it off, but I know she's there. And yeah. also taking into consideration um, Joy's position. And we are very, very, very well established educationally functioning human beings on this board. But not all boards are going to be that way. So we don't want to set up our bylaws that are going to do a disservice to somebody that wants to do the right thing, but does not necessarily have the educational savvy as the people sitting on this room right now. Right. Mm -hmm. So we yeah. need to also keep that in mind. We won't want somebody to get locked into something that they're mm -hmm. not going to be able to manage. And I'm mm -hmm. not saying that we all the brainiacs, but I mm -hmm. we are kind of. We're kind of cool like that, right? Yeah, they're cool. I mean, I like, <laughs> so it. I, I like what but you're also, saying. I've also been on the commission. This is my fourth year. And not everybody yeah. that came before the people in this room had the educational savvy, but they also had the heart and the um, social justice initiatives to help them move forward in whatever processes we needed. So we have to keep all of that in mind as we're navigating this document because... Mm -hmm of what I just said. So that's what I want to say. Thank you. Jacinta, I'm gonna ask you to wait a second um, because I do wanna comment on one thing that the guests brought up with regard to these procedures that I think is quite important and that's absent in our bylaws. And that is there's no statement about confidentiality. We've talked and talked and talked about it. And we mm -hmm. talked to the lawyers about it. He said, okay, mm -hmm. fine, you know, we don't, we, you know, we're concerned, we want to know what's going on in town, but not at the risk to someone else. And there's, I think it would really help our uh, bylaws to have some sort of statement that we will do and that we commit to whatever we can do. You know, we discussed this and it was said that if the press makes a request, et cetera, we can't really offer 100% confidentiality. Well, that's fine, but we can still say that in this process and when a complaint is filed, that we will respect that confidentiality and take all action to protect that confidentiality um, from everyone, including other town staff. I think this is one of the issues that the speaker brought up. So I wanted to say again, as a concrete measure for the change, uh, just a very simple sentence in there that says that this is of utmost priority to us. It's really important because we all have talked about it and talked about it. And I just realized after today's speaker that it's not there. Jacinta, thank you. Wait, one more second. Lev, I know you can't you can hear me, but you can't see me, but I just saw you on TV on the news. Okay, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um okay, yeah, Jacinta. I, uh I guess two things that I wanted to ask. The first one was in response to uh, Liz's comment about distinguishing between a resolution and a sounding board. Um, I guess it's a little, I don't know if it's, I, I guess I just want a little clarity on we're a sounding board, not a resolution board. Which that's correct. Okay, so then I guess, and I hope this isn't, because I know like hours and hours have been put in time. I guess it's a little, I don't know if it's misleading 
um, that it says complaint resolution procedures. I feel like maybe I'm not reading into it correctly, but because it says complaint resolution procedures and the idea of that procedure is that we have really no weight in that process, maybe we should consider naming it something else. Cause I can see how someone reading that would be like, okay, perfect. This is a solution. Let me go forward and read this. Yeah. Okay, this isn't a resolution. <laughs> There's no resolution here. Um, or the resolution is that I have to go to, the committee will direct me to that resolution process. I guess that it could be a little bit more specific um, that we're not, like we don't have that uh, specific, yeah. I guess it could just be a little bit more clear um, because that part is bolded. And then the other thing that I wanted to say was, I know, or one of the meetings from before with the other, um, before Ronnie, I forget his name. He was the Philip, Philip Philip, right. He would just pull up like a a draft, the bylaws, and then you y'all would change and edit during the meeting. So I know in case like that would be helpful for now in terms of approving later, I'd be happy to help with that too. Um, so that we could have an idea of what we want to change. But I don't know if since the process before you spoke a lot with the um, lawyers and dealt with the more legal side of things, if that would not be helpful for now, but yeah. Um, I want to come hear comments about Jacinta's first comments about what it is that we are, but um, I also want to ask as a practical matter, Jen, if you're able to put that thing up, because if we don't you know, I don't want to force a resolution if it's not possible, but this has been going on since before I got on this commission. And I think there's some place where we have to draw the line and the end of the school year is over. I'm afraid we're going to lose Jacinta and Tyler for a while. I'm aggressively recruiting new commission members, but if we can close it, we should. Um, so I think it would really help to be able to see it if. Um, Jen could post it. Um, and I think uh, for number two, when it says complaint resolution proce procedures, you just take off the word resolution and just say complaint procedures. And that would, I think that might do it. And then if we could have some discussion on Jacinta's first point, if you want to repeat that, Jacinta, you were asking about Liz's comments. about the distinguishing between resolution board versus sound board? Oh, I think you're muted. I'm just saying that's important. Who are we? Because I'm often torn personally in, the, in that, and I don't want to just be a sounding board. I think that uh, despite the fact that we don't have formal power, the whole, um, the whole basis for human rights is that it's sort of an ethical thing. It's like, we believe this and yeah, we don't have the force of law behind us, not always, but that doesn't change what the existence of those rights. And we're here to remind people those rights exist and to uh, make them as real as we possibly can. So I guess I'm hesitant to just uh, say sounding board, but I really think others should comment on this. Um, if we're clear on what we can and cannot do, then that's more important, I think. But on the shorter on the shorter question, are you okay, uh, Jacinta? Does it address your issue if we just call it complaint procedures instead of complaint resolution procedures? I'd be happy to hear how other people feel as well. But whatever suggestions people have, I'm. Um happy for I guess that one I just wanted to bring up like okay I don't know if this could be taken as misleading that's all Ronnie you're on mute I'm calling Deb on Deb first because you haven't spoken and then we'll go to Liz um, Pamela and Rizwana 
Oh, thanks. I love the idea, Jacinta, that you um, recommended that we call it what it is. And I don't think we have to grapple with the scope of our authority. We can just change the heading and talk about the scope of authority in our next meeting. But because, because I'm sensitive to the fact that this has been hanging out for years. Um, Hey, Liz and Pam, Pamela, sorry. I just wanted to point out that it is uh, 517 and we have a number of other uh, things to get to in a short period of time. So we either need to wrap this up or we need to vote or we need to um, table it for next week or next month or next week <laughs> but next month or we need to uh, move on from this because we have one two three four at least four other topics that we need to get to okay Pamela so um I was just going to point out that um what we what you have on your screen is a PD pdf and I don't know if um Jennifer's able to make corrections in real time, but I've been taking notes and we'll listen back to the to the tape. And um, in the uh, definitions on the very first section, I think something that addresses the concern about whether the um, your sounding board is the distinction between complaint and concern. So one of the suggestions that came from the co-chairs was to create an informal process where folks would still have an ability to raise a concern or bring an issue to light, um, but um, it, and that issue would not be a part of the formal complaint process. So there, there's two different avenues available. So it's more than, it, it, you are a sounding board, but it's a sounding board so that folks will have an opportunity to bring concerns to light that might not fit within the formal process. One of the other things that's important is that we document when anybody brings us a concern um, and let, um, so we can have a record because if it becomes, okay, Deb got a complaint from somebody from the housing authority, and then I got a complaint about from the housing authority, and then Jacinta got a complaint about the housing authority, then we know, wait a minute, we need to do a little more digging about what's going on with the housing authority. So it's not just, we have sounding board, we also need to be aware if somebody brings something to us and keep a record of that. Mm -hmm. So in terms of moving forward, I think Liz is right that is, does this meeting end at 5.30 or 6? I would like, I would like to take, six. Um, yeah, yeah six. I'd like to take just another a few minutes to go over the points that we do agree on so those changes can be made. And then anything that's outstanding that needs to be done can be done later. But this means we're postponing again the bylaws. Um, but what we do agree on, let's go, let's go for it. And so I'm asking your, I'm, I'm asking for, uh, Liz, you should frame this because you wanted to do it all in one which is not a not way that I'm comfortable with. Why don't you take leadership on this? It's not that I wanted to bring it, but if there's a motion on the table and it's been a second and we have a discussion, we either need to vote okay. and approve the bylaws or not approve the bylaws. Well, we can vote to approve the bylaws, vote to approve the by bylaws with necessary changes or not approve the bylaws because there's more work. I'm going to make a to different done. motion. I'm gonna make a different motion, okay? I move to approve the change to the introductory paragraph, include inserting the mission, the original mission statement in the revised bylaws. Do I have a second? Yeah, I second that. But we okay. should do something with the motion that's on the floor first, please. Oh, what is the motion on the floor? Sorry. The motion on the floor is to approve the bylaws. So we uh, need to take that vote. Yeah. And again, okay. it's approve or approve with necessary corrections or not approve for further okay. discussion. You can also modify it if you would like. 
it's a bit complicated because the modifications are so many, you know, but I'm happy to uh, put the motion back to the floor for a vote. Um, if you vote to approve, um, say yes. Ms. Haygood? No. Um, I think I, maybe I should give you a choice. I think we want to, I think we all want to vote to modify it. Yes. Yes. And I think we're probably all okay. Why don't we just say let's vote. If you, if you agree to modify, please say yes. Let's say good. So that's not the motion on the floor though. The motion on the floor is to approve the bylaws. So we have okay, to vote so on let's approving vote. the bylaws. And so my vote okay. to approve the bylaws that are here is no. Okay, Ms. Wana, yes or no, please? Uh, no. Uh, Deb, Deborah Kolodny? No. Tyler Maxwell, yes or no? No. Bonnie Parker, I vote no. Jacinta Smith? No. Okay, take it away, Liz. So we have a vote and the vote is zero to six in a quorum that we are not approving the bylaws as written. Now as a point of order, the discussion of the bylaws needs to come up again in our next meeting because we can take another motion. In the meantime, some of those necessary changes that we talked about, um, I do believe um, Pamela said that she took some notes She's gonna go make some changes. We need to get it back out to us, have it and take a look at it. So when we have our next meeting, there can be another motion to approve those bylaws as written. Can we? Also I would really like to go over the points that we agree on and be clear about it, so that the rewritten version we can say yes or no to. Um, so. I'm happy to go over it based on my notes. And if you all concur, then we all know what the changes will be next time and we can say yes or no with ease. Is that all right? Yes. Okay. So then I would say the first one is inserting the mission statement. The second change under duties is all to just simply include town council and town manager instead of town manager and town council. Um, Then I think we should revise number seven, look at it, and complain. The heading that says complaint resolution procedures, just make it complaint procedures. And that's all I have in my notes. And then Pamela can put in more stuff um, based on what she heard you us agree to. But when we get the next one, we don't want a whole new thing that we're again going to hash over. I'd really like to bring it to closure next time. So what we agree should be on there. Is that agreeable? Yes, I agree. I'm forcing it down everybody's throats. Okay. No, Whatever we need to it mm -hmm. does sound like we have to come back to this. So Pamela, you have your hand up. Do you have a better suggestion? No, I, I just have, um, so I have those three changes and the the only other change that I um, have in my notes is that you wanted to include some sort of basic statement around confidentiality. Yeah, is, that is has that to correct? be new because, yeah. Okay. So when we get this version again next time, it will reflect the changes we agreed on and it will have an additional piece about confidentiality that Pamela will draft and put into it. Is that okay with everyone? Are there any yeah. comments? On it? The only comment I have is that we also got to remember that this has to be approved by the lawyers and the town council. That's all, just keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Well, if we change it, that's what's going to happen. It has to go back. So I want to be sure when it comes next time, we'll say yes, and we won't have yet another change. Okay? Yes. All right. So shall we move down the agenda then? Um, 
Non-voting counselor liaison, we do not have one unless someone else has new information. Um, just I in a thought brief we reason. had a, I thought it was supposed to be at a Lord and maybe I'm mistaken, Never mind. I haven't received any notifications. So what I was told is that uh, the counselor are, counselors themselves are asked if they want to be, you know, be a town council liaison at the Human Rights Commission. And as far as I know, nobody's volunteered to do that. Um, among other things, I have not done it, but I think certainly any of us can go and talk to a town councilor and personally invite them because I think it's important for us to have that presence in the uh, on the Human Rights Commission. And then um, are there any other thoughts on that, having a town councilor liaison? Okay then, DI Cress. Pamela? So um, as you know, the there's a new Crest director. She started on the 8th. Um, there will be a public reception to welcome her on Thursday of this uh, week uh, from uh, 4 until 7. So you're all invited to stop by the Bang Center large activity room and meet um, Camille Theriak, um, who is serving as the new director. Um, and I will, the interim leadership team has, you know, stepped way back to allow her to step up and take control of her department. Um, so I think that's happening. Of course, you know, this is only the beginning of like week three for her. So it's, uh, there's not a lot to report on, but, you know, she's settling in and the interim leadership team did prepare not a report but sort of a continuity um, book, which is like two large binders, which highlighted all of the various sections of information that she would need to know so that she could have um, information right at her fingertips. So um, I think it's going as well as could be, you know, um, given the short period of time that she's been on. And, um, you know, I did not, uh, there was, a. I had actually thought had invited her to the prior meeting that did not take place. I'm sure if you would like to invite her to mm -hmm. your next uh, meeting, she would be happy to come and, um, and meet with you all. So, so on the um, uh, DEI side of the equation, um, as you all know, uh, we had some very sort of sad and tragic news for the department in that Jennifer will be leaving the town on May 4th is her last day. So I'm a little bit in panic mode, but I'm happy that she has a wonderful opportunity that she's going to be um, pursuing. And, um, uh, you know, the we're coming up with a very busy time of year, so we'll be leaning very heavily on members of the HRC. We have the AAPI, event coming up, Youth Hero and Juneteenth. Um, the DEA office and Crest office participated in the sustainability fair over the weekend. Um, um, there is a beloved Becoming Beloved community event that's happening on May 2nd. Um, it was postponed because of weather. So uh, that event looks is an invitation for anyone in the community to come and have discussions around microaggressions and implicit uh, bias. We have a program that will include like two very short videos and then an opportunity for our facilitators to engage in conversations. So um, I encourage you guys to come and to en encourage other folks to come as well. Uh, the entire town is in the midst of the DE uh, of the budget process. So planning our budget for last year, we've um, sort of gotten the hint that it's going to be a very lean year. So we're not looking to, or not expecting a huge increase in budget. Um, but um, uh, Jennifer and I uh, wrote a, a grant application to the PVPC and have received a $15,000 grant that can be used for community and cultural events. So 
Um, that's larger than I, our existing budget. So we've doubled the budget and with the receipt of that grant. Um, and I'm just looking at my notes. Yeah. Um, uh, the one other thing is that we have had um, another HRC com um, complaint come in. Um, that complaint um, has been resolved uh, with uh, some assistance from the press department who um, acted as uh, mediators and facilitators at, at a recent conversation with a local nonprofit. So, um, so other than that, I'm just trying to catch my breath and, um, you know, prepare for what's next. So Jennifer, please weigh in. I'm sure people want to hear if they haven't already more about your opportunity. Yeah. Well, I will say I've been staffing the HRC for about the last, since 2018. So um, very dear to my heart. I've enjoyed working with you all. It's always very interesting when the dynamics of the people change on the commission um, as they have since when I first started and to see the commission grow and to continue grow um, into a fabric of the community, which I think is something that's very important. When I think about before I was involved in local government, I would have never known there was an HRC commission. So at least I do occasionally hear people talk about it. So, um, you know, outside of the town. Um, so that's very good. I will be going to join 80 Acres um, as their community, their director of community partnerships. So I'm very excited for that. Um, but, you know, I've also been here for 11 years. And so I feel like, yeah, it's been a long 11 years. Enjoyed every bit of it. Uh, municipal learning uh, work is lifetime of learning. So there's never a day that goes by that you don't learn something new. So I will miss that, but I'm sure I'll learn lots and lots as I move forward. I will say, and others can if you want to, but it's impossible for me to imagine our events without you, Jen. Oh, I mean, we will really, still be doing those together, I hope. So, this is so literal. It's like, it's hard for me to imagine how it would come together without your energy. Um, well, I hope that we will still be doing those together because uh, it is a community partnership. So I would still want to work on the town to ensure that great. those events are still being are still happening. So, oh, awesome! And and having the next meeting without you will be really strange. I have to say. <laughs> yeah, it'll be interesting. Um, to see what it's like not to have uh, the second and third Wednesdays wrapped up in evening meetings. <laughs> She'll be all here right, for the next right. meeting. So you have your Wednesdays she, off. <laughs> no, she doesn't. She'll be here for the next Wednesday meeting because we'll be finalizing the um, Youth Hero Awards, which she has not given up even though she's leaving. So cut it out. Stop it. Don't even go there. <laughs> all right. The, um, the so I would never have left anybody in hanging because we have so many events that are upcoming. So I'm doing some of that work from 80 acres and some of it from here. So it'll be a collaboration. Amazing. Thank you. I want to join in the chorus of gratitude and just delight that you are moving into a new position, which you use your incredible skills with community engagement and organizing and um, creating community vibrancy. So it's it's a win for uh, 80 Acres. I'm sure it's a win for Amherst. And um, we'll, I'll be sad not to uh, see you as frequently. And I'm also, I just want to say, Pamela, damn, you don't get a break. <laughs> <laughs> Double duty with Crest, eluding, losing your staffer. Oh my God. So my heart is with you. Um, so I'm joyful for Jennifer and and, and sad for Pamela <laughs> and for us. One last thing, which is that, um, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off, Rizwan. I do want to go ahead. Yeah, Jen, thank you so much for uh, you know teaching us how to run the situation efficiently. And you have a big heart. And we will really miss you because we learned a lot from your you know, your, 
diplomacy and the way you communicated everything to us. So I don't know. I don't see anything without you. So, uh, but it's good that you went there and you're a great asset to wherever you go. Okay. <laughs> Pamela, did you have more to sure. say? So I just wanted to say that um, I will send out the details for uh, Jen's farewell, which will be um, on the afternoon of Friday, May 3rd. So I will send that to, to the board so that you're welcome to stop by. It'll be in town hall and, and well, we might need to move it to the bank center. But anyway, it'll be Friday, um, May 3rd, and I will send out those uh, that information to the to the board. Thank you. So Liz, about the police chief search. So I'm gonna to speak about the police chief search and a few other things as well. Um, the police chief search, we have finalized, we have two finalists that we put forward to um, the town manager. There was a meet and greet and a questionnaire and things with both candidates. I think Deb was at one, but not the other. Did you say for both? No. I went on doesn't to for the second one. Yeah. So anyway, um, I actually went up to town hall today to talk about something else and ran into Paul and gave him my open and honest thoughts about both candidates and told him that he has a great dilemma. And it's, I think, a good dilemma to have with the two candidates that we put forward. So that's where we're at with that. Um, also update that our fire chief, is on his last leg. He is leaving us in June. So we're going to be looking for maybe a couple of members of this committee to be on the next fire chief search because somebody from this committee should be on all the searches as far as I'm concerned. Um, we also are finalizing. We have two finalists for the superintendent of schools. And I think there's a meet and greet and I don't know the exact date. And I, am, I apologize for not knowing that. As a matter of fact, hold on, I can find it. Um, but while I'm talking about that, also know that we had a, um, Mr. Sadiq was the principal of both the middle school and the high school, and he is no longer the principal of the middle school. So they're in interim with the two assistant principals who are Doreen Reed and Rich Farrow. Um, and superintendent search. Um, so to, there's two community forums for the superintendent. Um, virtually uh, today at and tomorrow, virtually at 5.30 and in person at 6.30. And those, the 6.30 ones are happening. It doesn't say where it's happening. So I'm sure if you please use this online input to provide your input for the finalist. Hold on one second, see if that will say what time. No, it does not. So um, again, if you go on the school website, I'm sure there's a way to get to if you want to, if you're interested in the superintendent. Um, and so the middle school, the high school is fully staffed. The middle school is not fully staffed. And so we don't have a superintendent. We don't have assistant superintendent. And right now we do not have a principal at the middle school. We have two interims. Um, I think that's it as far as town government and where we are with leadership of the town. Thank you, Liz. Um, Liz's comments made me realize that I skipped the part on the agenda that said member reports. So let me take advantage at this time of asking if there are member reports from other members. There's one, did you intend to speak? No, okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, in that case, let's move right on. Um, okay. So, 
Yeah, I will have to forego my, uh, you know, contribution that I had to do on the, that was on the agenda. And so I will just hand it over to Deb. Okay, before we go there, Jacinta raised her hand. So did you have mm -hmm. a member report, Jacinta? No, I guess I just had an, uh, a question in terms of uh, Pamela brought up that there was a complaint, but it had already, it's been resolved before it came to us. So I guess I wanted to know if this is like an example of confidentiality, like this all goes before the one, if there is a resolution before it comes to HRC, then we don't, we get a broad understanding of something had happened, but it, it's resolved now. That's kind of how the process goes in terms of. So um, this is the sticky point for the work of this board, because obviously all of the meetings that you have are open meetings and are recorded. So discussion of detailed information would um, eliminate confidentiality. And in fact, although the board tries very hard to protect confidentiality, if anyone who was listening to this report made a request for a public records request, the town or the board would be obligated to provide them with the information. So confidentiality is very, very difficult. In the one of the prior um, suggestions of for the bylaw, we, I had uh, looked to another community which had included in language around mediations, um, mediation conversations can be held confidential, but the uh, legal counsel for the town felt that um, the use of that language would not, wasn't appropriate. And so we weren't able to write in that attempt at, at confidentiality. So we're left with um, the ability to hold conciliatory conferences and um, really the inability to hold things um, and um, confidentially, unless there are some very specific uh, uh, circumstances that are outlined by Mass General Law. So, okay. Yeah, I guess I just wanted to know a little bit more about the complaint, but in case. <laughs> right. And in this particular case, an, uh, a community member came in and made a complaint um, against a local nonprofit. Um, there was an, uh, an opportunity that was made by the nonprofit to have the community member come and have, uh, you know, a, um, mediation or conference or a discussion um, utilizing their uh, processes, that person asked to be accompanied by a crest responder. So a team of crest responders did accompany the person. Um, and at the conclusion of the um, conversation, uh, both parties felt like the issue had been resolved to their satisfaction. Okay. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really good to hear because it's a it's an indicator to us that these conciliatory conferences are really important, and they have power. It doesn't have to be the law saying you must do this or that. Uh, Rizwana, you had your hand raised. Yeah, actually, I'm going to be. You know, I did. Um, confidentiality is also a perspective also uh, because what's going on is that I just would like to share that is that I am we all actually get to read about uh, human rights and and some kind of some grants were also given by the town manager and so on in Gazette so uh, and that was also linked to their complaint about uh, not getting their appropriate share or something. So uh, the confidentiality is also, you know, very subjective that uh, it comes in the newspaper before it comes to us. I'm just saying how that, how does that work in that? I know it's very difficult to create that environment where you say, okay, you know, this is, uh, this is, this should be shared, but Others get to that news before we do. 
I I'm sure Pam, uh, Pamela would know what I'm talking about because that's the first thing that came to my mind. I read that in the newspaper about it was it's it's, it's a public thing that you know they they were giving funds and one of the nonprofits they said you know these okay. issues came up. Yeah. So so I think that there is an effort by town departments to maintain confidentiality, but if any of the parties choose to um, to approach the media or to send a story or to um, to have conversations with the journalists, there's there's nothing um, that I'm aware of that would prohibit them from doing so. And okay. in the case that you're um, that you're referring, I think the individual uh, parties who were involved chose to go public um, with their complaints. So, um, you know, and I won't speculate to their okay. reasoning, but that was their yeah. choice. Okay. It was not, it was okay. not that the town decided to bring that to the media's attention. Okay, all right, thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, so we have still roughly 15 minutes. Deb, do you wanna say in short what you had proposed? I'm not sure if everyone has read it and then we can have a discussion about it. Yeah, I'll, I'll do a little overview. I'm not sure we can have a discussion because of the time. Um, Passover mm -hmm. starts tonight. Um, it was really hard for me to carve out this time to be here with you. Like, I should be at a Seder like before I'm going to be able to be there. So, um, thank so, you for coming. It's my, <laughs> it's yeah. my devotion to, the, to this yeah. commission. Yeah, thank you, Dan. So, so the explanation is that. Um, this very conversation, Jacinda, that you brought up about, oh, you know, we don't even really have investigative authority, let alone like adjudicatory authority, you know, <laughs> how strong of a commission are we, has come up before. And people have said, "Where? how can we have some teeth? How can we do something that's um, legally within the bounds for us to do, but is juicier than this? So I wrote a proposal um, the first section is like the background and history, which by the way, has the last um, mission statement, not the current by the when they're talking. Yeah, yeah. But I gave a little history of who we are and what our purpose is and what we've done. And then the gap between what it is that we're doing and what it is people wanna see us doing. That's like the first page and a quarter. And then I offer a up a proposal and it has three parts. First, Maybe we could put together a one hour training video, just like we were subjected to when we <laughs> became members of the commission about conflict of interest, right? So that everybody who's um, a merchant or who is a public servant or is involved with the school, just anyone who has some kind of a position of a authority and has impact on other people knows what it means to live in a community that values human rights. And, you know, what do human rights look like? What are our expectations? What is a microaggression? What is a macroaggression? So it's like establish a baseline of knowledge. That's number one. Then do some data collection about what's happening so that people don't necessarily lodge a complaint. They could still do that, but they would also just report incidents so that we could have documentation of what's going on. So sometimes people are like, oh yeah, I want people to know about this, but I don't want to go into mediation and I don't want any you know, process, right? Um, and the, the, what sparked this was when I was in Portland and we were gathering data on hate incidents, which were, which the police basically said, oh, there's 10 incidents a year. And then the community co a community coalition got together. We created this data collection instrument and everybody trusted us. They didn't trust you know, the police or the FBI. <laughs> Once it was up and running, we were getting 200 reports a year. Wow. Right. Now that's a big city. Portland, Oregon is a much, much yeah, bigger city. Right? Sure. I don't expect anything like that to happen here. But what we were able to discern is where are these things happening? Who are the perpetrators? Mm. Who are the targets of the offenses? Are there patterns? Is there action we can do? So it enables us to assess what the scope is of the problem without, it, everything can still be confidential. Nobody has to report their name, right? And then the third stage is um, do something. <laughs> but it's not like hold yeah. someone accountable sure. like we're gonna file a lawsuit. It's more like sure. um, give training and 
mm -hmm. uh, to additional training to the people who are repeat offenders. Maybe have some kind of restorative justice process for people who are uh, repeat offenders to um, make amends and repair the harm and make a commitment, you know, somehow that they'll be held accountable to. Um, if the complaint is against a municipal worker or a school employee, some kind of, you know, uh, public official, then make sure that the information we get gets to the appropriate personnel system so that they know what's happening and then they can deal with it in their processes. Um, one of my ideas was that if if this is a commercial establishment, um, have some expectation that they change their behavior. Like three strikes and you're out, you lose your business license. I don't know. I don't know if that's viable, but you know, have some real teeth. Um, if there's a complaint that actually has some, um, can be fixed with financing, like the complaint is that there isn't an, a ramp to allow somebody to enter a building or uh, an accessible bathroom, or I don't know, things that require capital expenditures. Um, it could be that we have expectations that municipal entities, once they get that kind of complaint, are required to address it. And then mediation is also an option, like that's currently an option, but it's, you know, wouldn't go away. So that's in there. So that's the idea. I don't imagine, like if, the, if you haven't just read this and it's not top of your mind, I don't know how juicy a conversation we could have, but Jacinda, you raise your hands. So please, what do you, what do you think? Yeah, I guess I just, my question is like, in terms of people, reporting something illegal for the sake of reporting something illegal versus like the human rights violation I guess what like one that makes me nervous in terms of like I can off the top of my head I'm like okay there's like so many human rights violations that I can think of throughout my time being a college student um and like I can tell you like off the top of my head okay I know as a woman as a black woman there like the amount of um stories that I have just in Amherst alone of situations where people say human rights have been violated as college students, especially like since the turnover is so quick too, like um, thinking of those sort of um, solutions. But I guess my point is just um, like putting people in, I don't know, in situ, not people like businesses or people in situations where like they could lose like lose their business license um with the added complicated complicated nature of being in a college town where like a lot of people are doing inact illegal activities versus like what would be considered a human rights violation i guess to me i'm like does everyone have an idea of what constitutes a human rights violation versus a like illegal action um and then uh the second thing I was thinking about that is just um, in terms of how we, or not we, but like the tool that you have already come up with discerns, like kind of giving it that power of discerning what is considered a human rights violation or what is worth have like putting our energy into, I guess, versus other like if there's if everything is a human rights violations which ones which ones take precedent and how do we decide the seriousness of that I guess I don't know since this is like a more general idea of that yeah I'm, I'm more I'm curious to know how it worked in Portland too yeah 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 well in Portland we were dealing with hate incidents so it was a different category um and we allowed people to self-define here I think we would need to be really rigorous about our definitions and human rights violations can also be illegal, you know, so it's, it's, it is complicated. Um, but yeah, that's an upfront thing that, that we would need to discern that and clarify that and talk to the attorneys about that. Um, because that would need, that information would need to go into the training. Right. Um, cause I think it's all of one piece. So you're absolutely right. There's a, there's work that needs to happen before this can be rolled out, um, for sure. In terms of um, penalties or 
you know, losing a license. I have no attachment to that idea whatsoever. It's just mm -hmm. like an interesting thought. And, you know, the thought was to protect people who have um, harm. It's not to protect the one, you know, it's, it's not to um, cause more harm to the people who are being harmed, right? So if there is a racist, a homophobe, you know, a misogynist, uh, an ableist, whatever, all of the above, who's just being a real jerk to customers that come into their place of business all the time. It's like, we don't want that at Amherst, right? If they have enough complaints against them, should they have a license in town? Now, I don't know if that's happening, you know, but like to, uh, for people to understand that um, it, we're not, uh, we're serious about this. But I also, again, I have no attachment to that, you know, remedy at all. <laughs> So um, I think there's really a lot to think about here in the stuff that you've said, Deb, and I actually read this the first time around and already have had a lot of ideas. So I hope that it will be farther up on our agenda that we'll finish with the bylaws quickly next time and have <laughs> deeper discussion about what Deb's proposing here, because it is a potential work agenda. But I'm cutting in because I'm realizing um, there are two things I wanted to say. One is that we have to do our annual human rights report, um, I think in June or July. And I would really like somebody to write it with me. Um, you can look at, um, you can, uh, I email you last year's report. It doesn't have to follow the same format at all. It can be whatever we want. It's our report. Um, or draft it with me so that the whole commission can look at it, comment and so on. I'm volunteering to do that. Oh, okay, yeah. thank you. And then live for sure. Right. And with that and the last, the last I have, thing I really have to run. So um okay. yeah. so let me say the last thing before you go, which is that Tyler, I don't know if you're coming back to the commission or when your term ends exactly. Are you going to be back with us? I definitely want to acknowledge Tyler if he disappears after this. I know you won't be here in May. Yeah, um, I mean, there's a chance I might be able to make it in May, but just based on the timing, I think it's fairly unlikely since there's a very high probability I'm going to be in the car uh, during that meeting. Um, mm -hmm. And then after that is when my term ends, since I'm graduating in May, so I am moving out of Amherst. Oh, well, congratulations, oh. Tyler. And I think, you know, Tyler's been done a lot of extra work on the side with the uh, bylaws. And uh, we want to acknowledge you and thank you and invite you to join in every now and then, see what mm -hmm. we're up to. Uh, thank you so much. If anyone else wants to say some words to Tyler, you're welcome to do so before we close. Tyler, you rock. You're brilliant. And I'm going to go. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, Deb. So I also want to thank so, Tyler, especially on his work that he's done on the bylaws and the revision of the bylaws. And just being a... Um, a very logical thinker in all of the things that we've had to um, talk about and think about um, being able to take the risk of being a young person and telling some of us older folks, wait a minute, let's think about these, some of these things this way. And, um, you know, we've been very blessed as I actually, I have as a human rights commissioner to have people as young as Tyler um, uh, with Petua and with, um, uh, Juliana and oh my God, why Victor, um, that are able to just get in there and say, wait a minute, you know, I know that you all think this way, but let's take a risk and think my way too, and let, let's how to figure out how to meld our generational gap here, if you will, and just especially like when we was talking in last month about um, two months ago about the resolution over it for um, in Israel and just having the wisdom to speak and have me thinking about things in a way that I wasn't thinking about is very powerful to me. And I'm sure Tyler, you will go far and I pray for you daily and um, good luck to you. So, so I call you, I'm gonna say son. I say son, son because <laughs> that's, the, that's the grandmama in me. <laughs> All right, so thank you very much, Tyler. <laughs> And good luck and keep in touch with us. So are there any other topics before we close? Just that for anybody who wants to get some exercise at 80 Acres yeah. on, 
on 100 University Drive starting this Thursday from 6.30 to 8. For the next seven Thursdays, I will be teaching an urban line dance class. So if you ever go to one of those parties that we, they're doing those line dances and you're like, wait, I want to learn how to do that, that I'm going to teach you. So if you want to get some exercise, come to one, come to all of them. That's up to you. Um, I just right. want thank to you very much. No, about the second public comment, or you just, I mean, you don't really. Um, no, I would like to ask um, if if there, yeah, um, if there is additional public comment, please speak now. Thank you for joining us, two people. Um. Okay. I don't see any hands raised at the moment. Okay, so the next meeting will be, is it May 15th? Yes. The third Wednesday next month, online as before. And then finally, are there any other topics before we adjourn? Okay. Um, Jacinta, are you available through the summer? Um. Yeah, I think so. Uh, not in person. You're, but you're only a sophomore, right? You're not leaving. I'm a junior, so next you're year. A junior, okay. All right, good. Well, we'll look forward to having you continue to stay with us. So it is now 6.03 p.m., and I hereby adjourn this meeting. Thank you, Good night, everyone. Goodbye. Thank you, everyone. Jennifer, Bye. I'll call Bye. you. I need Bye. to ask a question. Okay. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Have a good night. Bye. 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 Stay